I believe we are live. I think we're so. A few but um, yeah, let's do this. Welcome oh, to Hot Dog Live podcast. have Matt Drago, the shining star of Somewhere in Montana, our sensational new local hit movie film. This episode, we're going to dive deep into the behind the scenes of the magic of the film, exploring the casting process, challenges, triumphs of picturesque landscapes. Join us as we uncover Matt's emotional journey from auditions to rap and dish out the inside scoop on his transformation into Fabian. But remember, always seek your own knowledge and truth, and remember to love God, love people, and love thy neighbor as thyself. Get ready for a candid conversation filled with laughter, tears, and Hollywood. Celebrate the talent and heart behind Polson's new cinematic sensation with Matt Drago. Welcome, Matt. Hello. How are you, my friend? <laughs> Good to be here. I am Thanks doing... for having me. Doing swell. I am so thankful and I appreciate you so much for taking the time to just come and have a good conversation with us and the people that are watching. Well, you were the beginning of this journey for me. So uh, this is this is uh, full circle. This is awesome. Uh, so um, just a little bit about somewhere in Montana. I was tasked early on and entrusted in doing the casting for this this film when it was started it was just a local project it was just a local film that we were going to do on a small budget and i was new to casting self-taught and i was uh it was trial by fire i was sending a lot of big names for for this movie just shooting for the stars and uh when i did the casting I got a lot of submissions for the different roles and this and that. And uh, Matt was one of those submissions. And Matt, when you saw the film and whatnot, give us a little bit of like why you submitted and and who are you? How long have you been acting? Like, what? just give us a little bit of who Matt Drago is. Sure. Um, I mean, I, I grew up in a small rural town. Um, you know, in Virginia, uh, right next to West Virginia. And, uh, you know, acting kind of grabbed me from an early age. I just loved storytelling. I, I felt like there was real power in it, um, real uh, ability to change, real ability to grow within yourself and with other artists, uh, because it is such a collaborative art form. And uh, that's what I love so much about it is that, you know, there's a lot of different masters of their craft coming together to, uh, you know, tackle something bigger than themselves. And, um, you know, uh, that journey for me as an actor led me to New York City, a little small town called New York City. And, uh, you know, studied, <laughs> studied, studied a little, little, little small town. Um, I studied with uh, the great Terry Schreiber. Uh, he, you know, directed uh, off Broadway. Uh, he became like a grandfather to me, and he led with love, and that's kind of what I was looking for in an acting teacher. There are acting teachers out there that that break you down. I'm kind of more the Terry Schreiber, Larry Moss approach. They just love you to death. They make you feel really safe, and they make you feel like um, you know you just really need to find yourself in the character because you're only as good as what you can bring to the character. And that's the best part about acting is uh, the release of it, finding uh, how to do a character in only the way that you can do it. And sometimes it's not going to get you the job, but I do think that you can hang your hat on, you know, the reality is that, and it's a great quote, and I'm going to butcher it a little bit, but you know, 100% of the roles that are meant for you will always come your way. And I believe that. I believe that there's only so much control yep. that you have in in life, and um, and and they come to you in the strangest of ways. So to answer your second question, this one came to me um, in the strangest of ways, and I'll tell you. So I uh, moved out with um, uh, my girlfriend, now my wife, 
uh, and we moved out to California and, you know, I needed a job and I got into the restaurants because that's something that I did in, in New York City. I served a block away from the Plaza Hotel and fine dining just always came naturally to me. Uh, and uh, I got a great job with a, a local restaurant over here called Larson's Steakhouse in Valencia, California. And I met some just really kind people that are also friends of yours, uh, Kyle and, and Zuzu uh, Weingart. And uh, it's about like, you know, life in this weird way, because it's like, you know it and I know it. It's like how many audition tapes that I put out there through my agents and managers and, you know, the hustle and the, you know, bustle of, of you know, just trying to get your voice out there as an actor. And I really do. I remember this uh, call like it was yesterday and it really just, it shook me. It really even talking about it and there will be tears in this conversation. I know that uh, is that good, um, good. she, she, she just, she called me up one day, you know, and we're, you know, doing our shifts and, you know, it's shift after shift, you know, the normal hustle and bustle of the real estate or the restaurant world. And uh, she, she said, Hey, I've got a friend um, named Brandon and he's got a script. And every time I read it, I see your face as um, Fabian. And uh, that's just a friend. That's just a friend, an actor friend to another friend. And instantly my curiosity was piqued, obviously, because she knows me as a person, um, you know, not really even so much as an actor, but just the, the essence. Because again, it's like what you bring, what you give off. And I, I you know, I, I worked with a, a couple great uh, acting coaches in um, New York, and one, you know, called it uh, the myth, the myth of you, whatever it is inside you, like what you give off that you can't even like that. Con control. Yeah. It's like your, your myth. And, um, and, you know, uh, she basically had me read the script, I devoured it as quickly as I could. And I fell in love. I fell in love with the, uh, the story, I fell in love with the character, I instantly, um, needed to get myself out there for it. And again, not knowing what it was going to be, not expecting to get the part, you never do, but just really knowing that I had to, you know, do my best and, and bring my best to it. And I uh, got a couple local acting buddies and, you know, coached with a, a couple acting teachers and, you know, got a bunch of different opinions and really, really did the work because the work is, is the good part. The journey uh, is the work. Um, there are a lot of great actors that say that Brian Cranston says that who I admire, you know, it's, it's, it's about, yeah. you know, the audition is the win. It's uh, well, Michelle heard, you know, says that who like a big sister to me, we'll, we'll get into Michelle. I just, it's one of my favorite people. Um, she's but, awesome. you know, she's awesome. yeah, she, you know, she, she says that she's got the, you know, she's like, every time I get a role, you know, like I just, I just, you know, and, and, and that's the way I felt about Fabian. I felt very, very personally connected to Fabian and in ways that I didn't actually fully understand until I started giving bits and pieces of Fabian away in production. But going back to the story, she said, uh, you know, I, I, I see your face every time I read Fabian and, um, you know, I wanted to read for it. And that's when I, you know, did all my work and, and uh, submitted a tape to you. And uh, I guess you take it away. You, you, you took the tape and then showed it to Brandon and Eden. And they were like, well, this guy has maybe got something that we've been looking for for this part. Um, I know that they were looking for something very specific that I, again, didn't really even know I had until I, I, was cast in the part and I started to hear uh because it's Brandon's words and it's Brandon's script which is again a really special thing when you have someone that is the writer and the director of a project because they really know yeah. not only what they're directing but they know like they have all the images they have all the feelings of all the characters like um you know already ready to go and my job at that point was just to bring myself to that to that role and to that project and it just was effortless and uh i feel like we should we should tell the viewers how you delivered the good news <laughs> on how i booked the role because it was it was amazing <laughs> do you want you know, for me <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll say i'll say it um well one i want to i want to i want to say um 
that when it comes to art, and especially film, you need to trust everybody that's part of the project. And when you're bringing people on board, you need to trust them. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, dude, you are not my first choice for Fabian. And it wasn't in it and it wasn't because I didn't know you and I didn't know that anybody else. Right. And so I was just going off of what I was doing. And when I was tossing the, cause I was getting like, I, I knew nothing about casting. It was all self-taught. It was all YouTube. It was all, I knew nothing. I didn't work for a casting agency. I'm just a dude that tries to figure stuff out. And when they, when I got all these submissions and I got yours and, uh, um, I knew you were definitely a, a callback for sure, for sure. Um, and what what I did to respect the art for this project was I I trusted Brandon because even with Kaylee, when he was like, "I like her," I was like, "She just doesn't have that grit that we're looking for." He goes, "Nah, dude, there's just something about her," and I was like, "Okay, all right, right," because the director has the final say when it comes to casting, and it, it wasn't. I was like, "Well." The, I don't, you're, that's not who I would have picked. It had nothing to do with Jared. It had nothing to do with my ego. It was, it was the respect and the love of the art. And that was trusting Brandon. Like you said, he had those visions in his head and he he knew what he wanted. Right. So when we did the auditions and you killed it in your audition, um, when I give, if people don't know how acting works, usually they never call you back. If you don't get it. They'll never tell you no. They'll only call you and tell you, yes, you got a call back. So emotionally, a, a rookie, an early on actor will spin their emotional wheels, checking their emails, hoping they get a call back, but you got to set and forget it. But when you got the role, and I did tell people though, since it was small enough and I understood that and I could, I could actually call people back. I told people that I would call you back. Yes or no. Do you, do you remember that? You did. You do. Yeah, I yeah, I do like, remember that. I'm like, this usually doesn't happen, but I will call, and I'll either call or email and let you guys, whether you got it or not. And everyone's all I cool. was the jaded so, New Yorker that, that that was like, yeah, right. Okay, sure. Sure you are. <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever. Forget about all right. it. All right. Um, <laughs> Forget about it. So when I called Matt, I called him personally. And I go like this, and I and I and I thought of the words before I said it, so I could set it up. And I call Matt. I'm like, "Hey, Matt, this is Jared." And I can hear your voice. You're just like, you know, as an actor, you're like, what, "What's this call about?" This casting director don't call you. And I was like, "Hey, man, so I just want to say good job." Um, there was a lot of people. They did a lot of they did a lot of good stuff, man. Um. I'm like, and unfortunately, they didn't have what you had, and you got the role. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> because what word do you hear all the time as an actor in emails and whatnot? Unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. And ben, ben, Matt, ben and Matt actually uh, say, uh, yeah, I went to the, you know, early on, they went to, you know, casting directors, and they said, yeah, I got, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, that's thanks. what they call it. <laughs> you had me. But I, I, didn't... I, I, I remember that like yesterday. And, and it is kind of amazing that um, I, it was great for me to go through all those emotions. Like you, you, you did something because it is, it's such a, it's such a moment. Like when, you know, now that I'm kind of on the other side of it and we're casting projects, it's, it's that you don't know what it is sometimes you it's you blind never know what it is. It, it's almost like you yeah. said and I, I appreciate the honesty like i wasn't your first choice for fabian you know kaylee wasn't you know the first choice for laney but we brought something i i really do i i have to believe that sometimes it's just really giving way to yourself and letting yourself be enough and even if that doesn't resonate with the casting director for that specific project a lot of times those casting directors have other projects but for me the words that you said to me um on the day changed my life and i am forever grateful for that absolutely absolutely you know i was 
I was actually really excited to give that phone call because oh, I, I don't know about you, show, but yeah. give it somebody some good news. You know, uh, uh, Jamie, the, the movie's called Somewhere Montana. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's across his shirt right there. Somewhere Montana. It hasn't, um, has not been released to the U S yet. Boom. We even got the coffee book. That's awesome, dude. Um, it will be released, I believe this fall, but stay tuned. Uh, just look it up. Um, but just delivering that. And here's the thing, man, about what I learned also early on, like watching behind the scenes stuff of like Halloween or a lot of these OG movies. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they're getting themselves into. They don't, they don't know like where that project is going to go. Right. And so it's just trusting and respecting the art and the other ones around you and just showing up and doing your best and being respectful of the people around you and respecting how they do their art. Um, I strongly believe that in film, things are supposed to happen the way they're supposed to happen in time. If you try to force something, if you try to like been rushed in a project and it kind of sometimes flies, because it's like the universe is like, it's not time, but like, no, no, I want it done. But the universe is telling you it's not time. Just like somewhere in Montana, what happened a month before we were supposed to shoot? Um, well, I mean, uh, I don't even know if I've told you this personal story, but I, you know, the movie got pushed back a year. Uh, it a didn't year. seem like, a like we didn't. Yeah. It was it was not a month though. It was it was days before I was actually going to get in the car and drive because I, you know, being the the, the oh. semi method actor that I am, I really wanted the experience of leaving the the, the city of LA and um, doing my couple days in Vegas and then you know uh, doing those hiking trails in Zion and um, doing the you know highest peak in uh, in like Salt Lake City and then going up to Montana. Like I wanted the ability to feel um, the journey of leaving uh, 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 urban environment and going to suburban. But I'll tell you this story because I don't actually even think I, I told you this on set. And again, there might be tears here, uh, but um, I uh, lost my, um, uh, my, my stepfather uh, like days before I was supposed to start that drive uh, the year before that we were supposed to shoot. And uh, literally the day after my birthday, I found out that he passed away and he was one of my best friends. He was my best friend growing up and he was my protection. And, uh, and it just destroyed me to the point where I felt kind of like lost and catatonic. And I felt like I, um, this is before I knew that the movie had gotten pushed. I felt like maybe I couldn't do the job. Like maybe I wasn't like able to, um, you know, uh do what Brandon needed of me and what Eden needed of me and I um because I just felt destroyed. I I felt shocked and I probably was the only person on that call, I'm sure you were on that call too, where when Brandon told us that they were pushing it a whole year, I felt instant relief because I felt like it was still my role and I had the time to just reset myself and grieve uh, and grieve hard. And um, you remember my, um, my tree of life uh, pendant that I wore around my neck in a scene in the movie, I'm not giving anything away, but um, in that really important scene in the movie, that, that was my stepfather's ashes in that. That was a real that's awesome. That was that was him with me. And uh, I figured out a way. And I actually talked to my teacher, Terry Schreiber, about this. He's very good friends with Alfred Molina. And he came in once and talked to us when I was in New York. And he said, you know, I'm going through the loss of my father right now. And, you know, I have this role coming up. And the first thing that I'm thinking 
and I'm beating myself up about it is like how I can use this for this role that I've got coming up. And, um, and he felt really guilty about it. And Terry looked at him and this is just kind of the man he is. He's, he's just like, like, he's just love. He's just, he's a very special teacher. He um, taught Edward Morton. He's, 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 he's just a really great guy. Um, he said, no, Alfred, you're honoring him. You're honoring yeah. him through your art, which is a really delicate thing to think of because uh, a lot of actors are labeled as selfish. They're uh, labeled about, you know, being of themselves. And, and, and some are, but some people that aren't actors are. I mean, it's in my life, I have known actors are some of the most selfless people that I've ever met. Um, and that's tr truly, truly have just loving, genuine people. And, uh, when the, thank you, Jamie, I appreciate that. Um, when it got pushed back, I felt like I had a, a year to recollect. I had a, a, a year to, to really do the work. I felt a little rushed to be honest. There were a lot of things that I wanted yeah. to do with Fabian. I wanted to break down every scene, you know, almost like Fabian. But like I wanted to get my whole type A into it and, and not feel rushed. So when we got that call, I was just like, I felt like it was the biggest gift for me to be able to, you know, have this year. And I did. I found that a lot of the role is uh, Fabian. And I get, did give him this backstory is that he, he does. Um, have a real um, hole in his life where he needs a father figure. He needs like a guiding force. He's he's uh, he's a little lost when it comes to that kind of force in his life. And I think in some ways, you know, when people see the movie, that he can he he kind of finds that in in John in a very strange way. Um, it's not like he's his dad by the end of the movie, but I do feel like there's a little bit of that need for respect which i think is sometimes even more powerful than love is is respect and so a lot of that that i brought into the film for me matt again bringing yourself you say you know yeah. do the best do the best that you can but really what that means is do the best that you can like bring like like unhinge yourself from not thinking that you're enough because you are enough and it and the result of getting the, the job is not not being enough. You are enough, but there's a lot of things at play. You know, it could be a look, it could be a name, it could be a lot of different things that are out of your control. You keep doing the work, you keep loving acting as much as I do, and you find yourself re-fall in love with it when a role like this comes into your orbit because this role made me fall in love with acting again and it made me fall in love with acting again because of um the heartbreak that it took to get me there beautiful man i remember getting the phone call from brandon as well and he calls me and i'm paraphrasing and he's like hey jared <sighs> We got to push it a year. And for a second, I was like, fuck. He goes, Graham, Graham's filming House of Dragons or whatever. <laughs> He's like, and I was like, actually, Brandon, no, this is good. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this gives us an extra year to fine tune what we need to fine tune. I'm like, I'm like, Brandon, things are supposed to happen the way they're supposed to happen. And if the film universe is telling us it needs to be pushed a year, there's nothing wrong with pushing it a year. If everybody's still on board, let's push it a year. Right. And we did. And I, I, I kid you not, man, this is why I trust the artists that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. I feel that you and Kaylee, especially Kaylee, that you guys took that year and did what you needed to do to really fine tune your craft for your for your for your. so 
I feel that Kaylee was not even the same person that auditioned when she actually when it came to actually a year later. Like there was so much growth. Sure. So that brought it to the table as well. But even like the film universe, it's very unfortunate. I'm so sorry about your loss, man. That's, oh, and thank you. Um, that's I not easy. Your, I love your mom I, it, it, and 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 Jamie. But thank you so much. It, um, but it's true. It's it's like jamie said guardian angel and uh you know it it is hard to share but i think you realize in art like you know part of being an artist is going through pain and accepting that and repurposing it and that's i think where you can find true joy in it because we are all (laughs) going through something we don't really fully understand and yeah that's okay but that's that's really what good art is, is understanding, knowing that, and almost loving that part of the journey. And a lot of it comes with pain. And I don't think I would have really approached this role the same way uh, if it hadn't been for that hurt, because it really forced me to let go. But like Jamie said, it really gave me like a guiding force, like a guardian angel where I felt like I'm going to do this for you, dad. Like, you know, this is, this is like, I'm going to, I'm going to bring you to set with me and um, I'm going to make you proud. And I feel like that's a lot of baby. And there's something driving him like that is something that he can't fully understand. But Matt had something that was driving him that he fully could understand. And when I was giving those scenes away, it was, um, it was, it was special in a way. I felt like I was honoring my, my stepfather my friend yeah you know uh i just started um some more uh, acting classes last night really great little group um and what i teach what i teach actors i'm like all art is expression of emotion yeah all art is expression of emotion why do you think a sculpture can make you cry a painting can make you cry a song can make you cry can make you feel make you hate make you happy If, you, if 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 an actor, if people just understand that all art is an expression of emotion, yeah. that really helps you understand. I feel it's helped me as an actor and as a being part of film, even on the production side now. Even editing, everybody on sets an, is an artist. The director's yeah. an artist. The lighting's an artist. Sounds yeah. an artist. Oh. You create emotion with sound. You create emotion with light. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. You know. So just understanding that, and that's why I love art. That's why I love expressing through art because Mm -hmm. to do it, it's does it work, right? And um, how often or how how many times did you go through that? (laughs) You had notes. You had, which is great because it, it was a big role. So what um, what what things did you do to prepare over that year? There was a point um, where I'll get into the nitty gritty, but I um, honestly really felt like there was a point where I was over preparing. I was overthinking it. Uh, there was a point where I met with a couple acting buddies and. Um, one of my friends said something that really resonated to me. Um, he said, Matt, you really need to forget the, the name Fabian. And I said, what do you mean? Shit. And he said, yeah. he said, just be Matt. Just be Matt. You're enough. This role, this role is you. Just let yourself fully into Fabian forget the name Fabian, just be that. And again, it kind of goes back to that thing because we always have this idea of, you know, how great we want it to be and how much we want to show that like we're a great actor and, you know, um, that we, you know, want to show everybody how, how hard we've worked. I did, I overworked it. I, you know, when you saw my script, it was kind of like, um, I don't know, 
like a little bit psycho, maybe, you know, in terms of how many notes and how beaten it up it was when, when it went to set. I mean, I think when I finally brought it to set, there was like duct tape around it because like, even though I had gotten it binded, like the binding had fallen off. And actually in the movie, the producer uh, throws out my script as a prop, which is kind of interesting because I finally like was like, well, that was very meta because I kind of needed to throw it out after, after a while. Um, I needed to kind of let go. And this is from Brandon again, you know, we had multiple Zooms. I want to say like probably about 10 Zooms where we, you know, he systematically took me through the script. We did it in order. Um, you know, we went through the beats together and I, you know, prepared and then prepared and then over prepared and then over prepared some more. And I think by the time I got into the car, ironically, to drive to Montana, I remember on that whole trip, I did not look at the script once because it was time for me to be mad, enjoy the trip, enjoy the transformation. Um, I remember when I got <laughs> over the hill, looking down on that beautiful Flathead Lake. Again, I got to buy a place there someday. It's just, I mean, it, 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 it will heal you if you look at it long enough. Like it will, it will heal your soul. Um, I remember coming down that, you know, uh, and right as I was coming down the mountain, it was like, it was like kismet. Cause again, you know, Fabian, he wrote, Brandon wrote Fabian as part of himself. There is, you know, that, you know, dichotomy between John and, and, um, and Fabian being st somewhat pieces of his own emotional journey. Uh, and it was crazy yeah. that when I was coming down that road and it was literally on the peak like it was like I'm yep. coming down the peak and I'm looking at the water and I'm just like, wow, is this real life? And Brandon called me right at that moment. And uh he's like, you know, because we're meeting at the bar to, you know, I, I showed up a week early because again, I wanted to see what he did. You know, Fabian's a director. I'm not a director yet, maybe in the future. Right. Um, but you know, I wanted to follow him for a week and you know get an idea of what it took to be a director set. So that way, when I was on set, I knew how to control it. I knew how to handle myself. And again, coming down that hill, he calls me right at that moment. And he says, Matt, where are you? And I was like, yep, without, he <laughs> without, without, without hesitation, right? It's just a short 18 hour drive. But you know, I just, you know, yeah. I, in that moment without hesitation, I literally said, I don't know, Brandon, somewhere in Montana, Hey that's awesome <laughs> and that's where the journey begins i mean it was uh it was awesome it was really uh from that moment on i just i i felt like i was in a family i think you can speak to this too yeah i, I just i had this really weird feeling you know driving from all of these big cities and there's there's great things about big cities right i live in a big city i live in la and i love it and i you know that there's some great things about it but when i was kind of releasing the the big cities on what what brandon called the the fabian fabian freedom tour that's what he named it you know me yep, driving up yep. to montana the fabian freedom tour <laughs> um you know maybe you know uh, me getting unleashed to to tackle this role is uh right. I really I really felt like I was driving to a family that I didn't know yet but I but I felt like I, I felt like this was going to be special and I think it was kind of an earlier question that you that you said I the first uh national tour that I had um because I'm a, a, a stage guy too a uh, singer is um I was on this national tour and I remember like you know, the, the producer coming to me and, and being like, Matt, what's going on? Because I was kind of like the level headed one and trying to get everybody together and like, we can get through this and da, 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 you know, and I remember him coming to me and he just basically said, you know, Matt, this is uh, he was very New York, you know, Matt, this is the big leagues now. And, you know, sometimes people just don't get along, you know, and, and it's a professional gig, yeah. and, you know, you, some, you just got to move on. You can't you can't fix everything is what he told me. But yeah. I felt, oddly enough, 
And I just had this feeling again, going down that road to Polson, Montana, that, that we could fix everything. And that does come from like this, just, I mean, I can't say enough about our crew. Like I can't, I really, I could go on and on about how much those people sacrificed and how little they slept. Um, that, you know, five, six weeks that I was there, uh, you know, they were so positive and they gave so much of themselves because I think we knew at the end of the day that this was a story that was bigger than all of us, but it took all of us. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Cause uh, of course I wasn't nearly, I wasn't on, I, I and uh, for those that um, are, are watching, I, I had a, I had a little tiny, the movies, uh, it's set a movie inside a movie. Um, and I was inside, inside, inside the movie. I was the assistant director. Yeah. I was the, uh, the first assistant director. So I had a little, I had a little tiny role. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the movie. Yeah. The movie poster. The movie that, that, the that's movie. a, that's a fun little movie poster that I, I asked Brandon at the end, if I could have, because it's a very specific and you know what it is, but it is Fabian's movie in the movie. So this yeah. is. This is Montana, a woman, a journey by Fabian Verdugo. The movie inside the movie. Yeah. Inside the movie in which you are my AD. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was kind of a cool little, almost like inception. Um, yeah. Cause when we were filming, um, it'd be funny when we're like, okay, uh, we need the, we need first AD, Jared, that, that, the, the actual one. Because uh, was it was the actual first ID? Was that John? Was it John? Uh, I, I can. think I think so. Yeah, I think it was John, and then Derek. Derek was. I feel like he was maybe like a producer. I remember that we at, yeah. at, at some point we were like, "You're this, you're this, you're this," and we all kind of yeah, had right. our little actions, but it really did fill out those scenes because those scenes specifically blocking wise, you know, we didn't really have time to block them, but I think when we got to set because of the fact that we knew our roles and you guys understood, you know, my character and the tight schedule that we were in, in this actual tight schedule. I mean, again, it's, like very it got very meta at a certain point you know um that we we you know we just we just knew because there were even moments where we would have a scene together and i just give you a look and you it, it's like we had like this long friendship where you're like okay i know mm -hmm. fabian's like like it, it, the meltdown is coming i got you dude i got you don't worry about That's it right. you know? and, and, and you know they're 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 little like little moments like that that i feel like played so well i remember there's like a lunch scene um you know right before an altercation and uh we were just kind of we came up with our own dialogue there was like a whole scene before the scene and i i think those things just they they matter but they only come from collaboration and that's just what we had from like like the get go it was really yeah uh, it was surreal. Like it doesn't, it doesn't happen again, going back to, you know, this, this, this national tour. I mean, they, they had a binder on how to do the show. Like it was very, you do this, wow. you make this gesture, you do this and then you sing this and then you really? go off stage. Like and it was bizarre. So you're like a marionette and puppet. It, it, it really, it really <laughs> Just... was. And it, it actually kind of made me uh, disengage a little bit from, uh, theater because I felt like it was getting a little bit too um, mechanized and that's not yeah. why I got into you know singing or theater I, I love you know I just saw Mandy Patinkin down the street and um, I you know I see him as like just this like incredible like father figure of musical theater he's just I mean nobody fills out a song like he does and uh and, and I think even he would agree, like, you know, he doesn't worry about like, is his, did he hit that note perfectly? Or was it like technically, you know, actor accurate because nobody ever like even goes there when they're watching him because he is so entrancing. He's so into the art of it. And he's been around the best. I mean, Sondheim, I mean, he's, he's, 
you know, I can't, I can't say enough things about him really as an actor or a singer, but in terms of just the craft of, of being a theater actor, um, he just, he embraces the imperfection because that's, you know, that's, that's part of the art is embracing that and hopefully finding yeah. something close to perfection within it. Yeah. You know, um, on that note, as far as like having so much control of, of the people of the art and whatnot, and you're basically just a puppet. Um, I can totally understand. I, I would, I would totally be like, what's the, why am I even here then? It's like, just get some people, just get some things to do the thing. The thing about like, what I love about film, there's directors that are um, actor directors and there's mm -hmm. ones that are directors that I have never, that don't understand the actors. And it's, so it's kind of, there can be, there can be a little bit of tension between the actors and the directors. However, um, Brandon's not much of an actor. Um, however, he does understand the actor though. And so yes. being under his direction, um did that help you did that help you be more freeing especially that week that you were basically shadowing him did you just get the the feel of what a director you know um would think what they would do what they would how they would how they would feel in these situations so how did you, um the comparisons um did one feel completely restrictive and the other one felt more freeing or how did you feel about the the two differences of that the two differences of what I lost of, the question. Of Sorry. like being like on stage and like everything's like you have to do this, you have to do this. You, have to, you can't even like move your own self so much um, unless it's like already you know because right yeah I mean in the it, moment. It, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, sorry, it's definitely it's definitely not um, the medium because I've been on in stage productions where you know it, 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 the way I look at it is it always comes from the top. And the top is yeah. the director, uh, you know, the producer, um, you know, sometimes the writer, if they are, I, I, I wish writers did have more pull. I, I, I hope that they will start to as more writer yeah. directors come about in the industry like Brandon, because it informs us in a way that I feel like even if, um, like you said, Brandon's not an actor, he's a self-proclaimed not actor, but he gets actors and he knows how he knows the feeling um, that he wants from a scene. He doesn't necessarily know how to, but he interprets it in a way where I can say, okay, that's what we're going for here. Uh, I think with collaboration, it really does. It, it, it starts from the top in that that person kind of sets that, um, ability to either collaborate like we had here or, um, or not. And, you know, I just, I don't personally like being in productions of any kind, uh, you know, where I can't collaborate, but then again, that's, you know, sometimes the job that we have to do and we have to be okay with that. You know, there, there are some jobs out there like I mean, you know, you could be doing a, a big budget superhero or a, a commercial or, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of jobs that actors have to take. And it's not that you're not being an artist anymore. It's that you are part of a big, fully functional machine where, you know, the audience is expecting something very specific. And you have to True. do do your job to embrace that, to bring yourself to it, but to to give that to them. So I always try to look at things in in the positive because you know I've booked yeah. commercials and you know it's very like you know you you tell the joke and but I'm you know but those are jobs that we all need to be able to get as actors because they lead us to jobs like this. They make us sustainable and they also really make us more coachable. Uh, you know, the craft of acting is really understanding the role, understanding the project, you know, a, a, a prime time is different than a sitcom, like understanding 
which world you're in and understanding what they're looking for and being able to be truthful to yourself, but also understanding how to deliver that product at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you on that one for sure. Cause it's, uh, you know, being going down to LA and in a matter, dude, in a matter of like back in 2018, I was like 31. You're never too old because film, everything, all one. But I got on like over 20 some shows in a matter of like two months as a background actor. I was working five, six days a week. And so I hit every single major studio a lot. And so I got a lot of, you could tell which, like, there's all TV shows. And you could, after a while, you could tell. Mm hmm. Yeah. That the flow of the crew and the director and and everything like that. Well, you made me see, yeah. Yeah. Right. It's for their character. Sure. And so it's in acting class too. I'm like, I, I, I'm like any, any anxiety or negative emotions that are Move past it. And I love now that more sets are being more woo saw and understanding and right. Old school movies, you know, and we're like the director is like not not. I'm like, because as an actor myself, if I'm put on a lot of stress, because it's not just like class. You're learning something with a few. Mm -hmm. I, I did that scene pretty well. Okay, that's cool. All right. Get on set where there's at least 60 people staring at you and they're waiting for you to do your job. Yeah. <laughs> and that adds so much stress. Right. It's like, uh, I don't know if you ever saw the movie with uh, Tom Cruise, The Last Samurai. Mm -hmm. I love that movie. You remember the part where he, he you know, he. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he goes, OK. Boom, boom, boom. And all his buddies like, good job, good job. And it's a target. Target. And he starts shooting all that stress. He's like, oh, so it's, it's nice to see that transition. Yeah. And, and it's more of a safe nest to respect the emotion and the art. It's because art and emotion go hand in hand, mm -hmm. you know, as the actor, you're trying to deliver the, the emotion on scene. Uh, and so that's just, that's just cool. That's just and cool you brought to, up a good point. Uh, you brought up, that, yeah, you you brought up a good point too. Is that you know you, you do still have to be able to perform. Like that is part of it. And and you know there's a lot of uh, film that is very technical. You know you need to know what the shot is, where where the angle is. You know how to deliver that line, uh, that emotion, so that the camera captures it. Uh, but it's also what you said before that is that you really need to disengage from any negativity and also not beat yourself up if you are 
having a little negativity, you know, being yeah. still understanding that you are a personal person, you're allowed to have emotions, uh, you're allowed to have feelings, but you can't let those feelings overtake you, you can't let them block you from your truth. Uh, you know, my teacher, when I had a, a show that I was on, um, played the prince and in into the woods it's one of my favorite musicals uh off broadway um and you know i i remember telling my teacher i said i'm, I'm really really nervous because there's going to be some like broadway people there and i'm you know i'm like my, my you know i'm like 20 years old and i'm just like you know i'm freak i'm freaking out i'm freaking out and, it, yeah. and it's block it's blocking me from being able to do you know, a great job. Cause again, this is a role I have so much fun with. I love it. Like I'm I, like, you know, it's, it come, came naturally to me. Um, but he, he literally looked at me at that moment and he said, you're nervous because you care. So it's okay to be nervous, but use those nerves. Yeah. yeah it's weird if you don't have nerves. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, if, if, if you're getting up on stage or, you know, you're, you're, you know, shooting this big scene with, you know, Graham or Michelle or whoever people that like you just love and respect. And, and, you know, if, if there aren't those nerves, like maybe you shouldn't be there. Cause I mean, part of it is that you care about what you're doing. You love what you're doing. And with that should come a little bit of nerves, you know? Um, but it's about how to channel those nerves and how to, how to use them as like a, a fuel, you know, to drive you. and like the 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 emotion blocking you get too much into detail on it here um but i don't i was going through a lot of emotional stuff i know you were during the filming of summer in montana yep i know it was uh it's so it's important okay. to uh, your partner, your spouse, whoever, to be supportive of of your art. Because so many times, it, and it's 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 almost like not talked about. Uh, but. Uh, yeah. Well, and that I was actually going to bring that up. I had I had an I had another. Go ahead. You cut out. You still there? OK. I'm still here. I'm still here. Not only that, she she gave me something um, that was truly um, I don't know otherworldly amazing. Uh, you're talking about my dog. Uh, uh, two weeks yeah. into production, I almost lost my dog, and my dog is like my child. Uh, there's no ifs ands yeah. buts. Like I I love my little girl, and uh, she had to have a, an emergency pyometria surgery, and um, my wife's, uh, my mom, my mother-in-law was here. And uh, fortunately it was again, you know, going through the process of what to do. Uh, I almost left um, Montana for a couple days during uh, a weekend, um, but they rushed her to the hospital. I, you know, had a couple days off. I was on the phone with her, you know, 
constantly trying to figure out, should I, should I leave and come back? Can I leave and come back again? I'm shooting pretty much every day. Like, you know, we weren't shooting, shooting during the week. Do I go back? Do I come back? But having that support, having somebody that got that I needed to stay in it unless I really needed to be there. She um, is the reason why my my dog and my child are still here because she understood it from both perspectives. She took on all that weight and it was tough, man. I mean, it's, it, it was like bordering PTSD. Cause again, we just love this dog. This dog like has brought us so much joy. I mean, I, I'm a big Scott Van Pelt fan from ESPN. And he said, you can't buy what dogs give away for free. And it's true. I mean, people that like understand what the love of an animal is understand like the weight of um you know that moment where you might lose it and i was already going through this heightened character that was on the verge of a mental breakdown and guess what i had that mental breakdown scene like right away so again i'm yeah. finding myself like the loss of my stepfather possibly the loss of my dog but it's true it's like you're support system is everything and we had some of those conversations on set and I really felt like there were a lot of people um that were going through a lot of different things on set uh but it was okay because we got each other and we lifted each other up and we like we're gonna get through it together like it was like a fight that we were all like ready for. Um, and I think it's just, you know, I, I always say like, you know, uh, friends are the family you choose. I think that there's many different types of forms of family in, uh, life. And I think that, I think you would agree that we have, have a, we call it the somewhere in Montana family, this movie is bigger than all of us. And I, I really include every single person that was on set you know uh yeah. I, I i got to know you know because i've been a background actor that's an actor like you know i i it was pretty cool to be you know uh someone that was considered higher up on the call sheet but still treat myself like anybody else that would be on set that were frankly doing in my mind sometimes way more important things than even i was doing and I think from that, yeah. like that collaboration and just that love and mutual respect and knowing that like, we're going to have good days and bad days. Cause like, frankly, indie film is, um, it's, it's, it's not a feat for the week, you know, it's, 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 it's a labor of love and, you know, people need to come together. And sometimes that is that emotional part of it too, where like, yeah, like, fuck, dude, if you're having a bad day, like, I get it. Like, you know, I almost lost my dog a couple days ago, and it's okay to cry. And like, we got each other. And like, let's just keep showing up because that's sometimes the job in and of itself is just showing up and, and doing the yep, best you can. Yeah. You know, in the in the collaboration, like you said, um, and we're getting we're getting towards the uh the end of this amazing interview, man. Um, but you're, you're absolutely right. The collaboration. And the thing is, the thing that really, um, just really quick, I, one thing I really enjoyed about Michelle was she was so consciously aware of eye lines and, 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 and stuff like that. Right. Which is very important. And the That's cool thing is as far as like AJ, the, the director of photography, Kashin, like yeah. I was like, dude, Michelle would, you know, you've probably been on some sets where someone like, hey, here's an idea. It's not like overwhelming. It's not like all the time. But it's like, hey, here's an idea, da, da, da. And the director or somebody's like shoots it down. Like, no, I'm not stupid. And it's like, whoa. It's like AJ would be like, okay. Huh. We'll, we'll see what we can do. You know, it was just mm -hmm. the way that he handled it. But also Brandon was like, no, no I like that. I like that. Like, he, it, it was a... It was a collaboration. It wasn't like an ego thing. Like, oh no, this is my vision. Your your vision sucks. I don't want to even hear what you have to say. It was a collaboration. And it
because I was emotionally supported by my partner at the time, and that come up, which and being you guys, you Kaylee, Tasha, John, Stodder, um, Love John. who else? The extras. Yep. You guys brought your brought your art and your talent to the table proud of you guys i'm so proud of you because i'm like wow we all fed off each other at the end of the I day can, I, I, mean, can, I can find some people to put yeah. in a movie <laughs> yeah no i mean we all fed it off of each other i remember that tasha and kaylee and i were the first ones to get there we called ourselves the big three you know like kind of the young hungry like bucks you know and then you know we we, we, we met like uh Michael Monks, just an incredible actor, uh, wholesome, genuine person, such a pro. Uh, Michelle, I mean, I could do a whole podcast just on what I think about her. She gave me a conversation that I'll remember the rest of my life as we just kind of like, I needed a little bit of guidance. And I do just see her as yeah. a, a big sister. She's one of the most special people I've ever met in my life. Um, Graham, just a true pro, a, a true partner. Um, you know, he, I've Great never guy. been called, Great I, I, well, I, I've never been called mate in my life. And, you know, every time he, he left, well, after the, that's yeah. brilliant. I'm no, like, I use that yeah. now because I'm like, this stuff is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, just, just a really special bond with him. Like really, um, everything that I could have been concerned about being you know opposite such a great actor like him was just, it melted away right when I met him. Like, I was just like, he's he's Graham. He's just a great guy. Like I'm, yeah. all I have to do is be with him. Oh, just, just all, but respect is the highest form of love. And it's kind of what, um, I don't think you were there the, 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 the last day, but a uh, uh, couple things I wanted to mention, you know, Brandon basically stood with me at the ranch as they were breaking down that last scene. I think I had like seven scenes the last day that I shot and uh, you know, leaving the ranch was very <laughs> emotional for me. Um, giving away yeah. scenes were very emotional for me. Um, uh, I'm sure you saw parts of that. Uh, but yeah. Brandon, you know, basically kind of took me aside and, and, and pointed out, you know, different people on set, Jason, Troy, like all these different people that were coming together, masters of their craft. And it was almost like a learning moment of, um, you know, this is what it takes to be a great director is delegating responsibilities and knowing that certain people know how to do things better than you do. And you have to rely yeah. on each other. Like it is a team sport. And I got to be honest, like the, the spirit of Fabian Verdugo lives on in me because it has actually made me maybe not direct, but maybe, um, but I am in the process of trying to produce, you know, my own work with my wife, who is an incredible writer. She's won now an award for a podcast that we've got coming out, the Crime at Camp, Camp Ashwood. Uh, the Crime at Camp Ashwood is on Sweet. all the, you know, major streaming platforms. It won um, best um, podcast script at Austin Film Festival this year, and uh, it's actually been reached out to possibly get That's get cool. optioned as a TV show. Yeah, so. We are, we're, we're trying to, you know, leverage that to shoot our first feature film, which will be a Christmas movie. And again, back in our little town in Virginia, where we're both from, kind of bringing back that spirit of Fabian Verdugo and Montana, A Woman, A Journey to our little neck of the woods, because I do, I think this role has impacted me in ways that I don't even think I can fully understand. And that call that you made that day changed my life because it really set me on a course to love acting again, but also find ways to be creative um, in different ways, not just in acting, but in producing and um, and and directing possibly. So um, I do feel like Fabian Verdugo almost found his way into uh, Matt Drago's soul in a way. And it's just kind of like propelled that next step in me. And then the last thing I'll say is that, um, you know, that giving away kind of ceremony is that the last day, and I actually, um, some, someone filmed it for me, my uh, last take, uh, which was incredibly devastating. I didn't want it to end. Uh, it was really, really hard to know that I was wrapped on Fabian. It was really hard. 
And uh, I just remember every time just thinking it was my last thinking I am like, like having like just a, a real emotional, you know, cry. And uh, I spoke to everybody that was on set outside the theater that we originally had the premiere at. How cool is that? Um, and right. I remember yeah. saying um, to everybody, you know, this, this, this month and a half has honestly, for me, been about how much energy you've given me and me just finding a way like you and like everybody else to just take it in and repurpose it back into the film. Because at the end of the day, like this is our film and thank you so much for all the kindness and support because believe me, it went a long way. I believe that when people see this film, they will see the energy of every single person that it took to make this because we all went through it together and we all knew again that we were making something bigger than ourselves and that's basically kind of what I the gist of what I said on um, that last night when I gave away you know Fabian Verdugo once and for all at least in 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 somewhere in Montana but again he lives on through through me I honestly think I, we could probably talk for another two hours I got I got so so there's so much there's so again. much juiciness this that this is us <laughs> yes. Well, we're, I'm going to be, I, I want to get, you know, I want to get more people on here. I'm going to get Tasha on here. I want to get as many people as I can as from somewhere in Montana on here. Awesome. It'd be cool to do like a, a group yeah. Skype one, but, um, know of what you're going on and uh yeah and I'll, I'll ask you those last questions. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, my wife's, uh, maiden name is Hunter. Uh, my last name is Drago. And so we have a production company now, Drago Dragon, Dragon Hunter Productions, because it's Drago and Hunter. So Dragon Hunter Productions, right? You can follow us Heck on. Yeah, on yeah, right. Um, you can follow us on Instagram. I'm very active on my Instagram, uh, Matt Drago, at Matt Drago. And then we have at Dragon Hunter Productions. Uh, the next step for us, we've got this podcast. Um, that's just, I mean, it's blown up and we're really grateful for it. We're grateful for this little bronze statue that we've got here of the bronze typewriter for, um, oh, cool. for, for from the Austin Film Festival. Couldn't be prouder of her. I mean, you want to talk about a moment, the uh, writer that won the Oscar for adapted screenplay for American fiction spoke right before my wife went up and accepted her bronze typewriter. So it's just really cool to oh, cool. feel like you're, you know, you're in you're a colleague now and that's what we are you know it's it's really cool to just be um collaborating and being around great collaborators and that's kind of what's propelled us to our next step which is um you know Laura has a script she got through the Sundance Labs I'm so proud of her and this script is now winning um awards as well and this is the movie that we want to shoot and it is almost in the um, spirit of somewhere in Montana. Again, it's 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 a little Christmas movie, and it's you know gonna hopefully be shot in our little town. Again, bringing like our stories to those specific um, places in the country that might not ever get a voice, you know, like New York does or like LA does. And I I, I think that actually was the spirit of um, you know what how Fabian impacted me is like telling these stories because I walked around for hours after the premiere, actually kind of, I think by myself and a very Fabian-esque why I think I was getting some gifts for my wife and this and that, like a, a, a writing journal and some different things. And all the people that were coming to me, a lot of them said a, a lot of similar things, which was, thank you for, you know, telling our story. And I feel like that's like almost the best compliment an actor can get is like you told a story about like our little corner of the world and we could have never expected this. And, and, and that whole month, like when we'd go to Betty's and get, you know, uh, food and like, you know, Kaylee and Tasha and I would go out or John, and I would, you know, and, and people would be talking behind us and they'd be like, Oh yeah, you hear about this, this film that they're shooting. And like, you know, it, you know, we're really excited about it. And it's just like, I think this is kind of the next step of what we need to do as artists, because, you know, obviously not going to get into the, you know, the SAG stuff and like AI and all that, but we know that it's real yeah. and it's not, it's not going anywhere. So um, our stories matter and, and, and human stories matter. And the only people that can 
tell human stories are humans, obviously. And so I think we really need to lean in on, um, you know, again, collaborating, being there for each other and, um, you know, continuing that spirit of those little corners of the world that don't necessarily have a voice, but we've got a story for them and we can tell it. Sharing that and just okay from uh, but way back in the day. You ready? Love that show. Yep. Fire away. Ooh came to me perfection. I've been saying it a lot, but not in the literal sense. I actually mean that I love um, striving for, for, for perfection, even if it's, um, you know, an idea that's hard to realize. Uh, I, I would say in perfection, there are perfect moments in life. I think one that comes to mind just talking to you is uh, our first scene that we were on set together. And, um, you know, you grabbing me by the shoulders and, and just saying like, this is your moment. You, you, you got this, you belong here. I think you said, um, and, and that to me was like a perfect moment because I was, uh, feeling like the nerves. Right. And you just like shook me right back into, oh yeah, I, I got this. So perfection to me is like the idea of perfection. And I just, I don't know. I like that. I like that word. Perfection. Cool. What's your least favorite word? Ooh, uh, prejudiced. It probably comes more in the form of racism for me. Uh, again, growing up with a, a black stepfather in rural Virginia, it's just, I don't understand the concept of racism. It's always been just a, a very ugly man-made concept that, um, I think we just, um, I, I, I think it's taught and I think it's not real. I think it's, um, it's sad. And, uh, you know, I, I remember, you know, growing up in, in this area where my stepfather just hid me from it, basically. Like he took all that and he didn't even let me see that it existed. And uh, um, I just, I hope that we can continue to be better than that because it's a really, really ugly thing when people judge each other and they just, for no reason, um, are, are prejudiced against each other. It's like one of the worst Absolutely, things I man. think. Yeah, yeah. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Um, what turns you on creatively? Uh, creativ creative. Creatively? Yeah. Um, collaboration. <laughs> uh, somewhere in Montana. That, that type of thing just drives me. I mean, you know, like I said, there are projects where collaboration is not there. When people see this film, I hope they know from the bottom of their heart that this is like everybody. Like everybody is collaborating. Every single person that was moving yeah, a yeah. piece of equipment that was setting that shot up with not enough time to do it. Um, everybody was <laughs> everybody was there for each other in ways that I don't think I can fully even to this day comprehend. So collaboration. Collaboration. What turns you off? Um. Hmm. Uh, a lot of things, uh, I guess just being, um, like lack of respect, you know, um, people, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, like I say, I say this all the time, but I do think that respect is the highest form of love. When I, you know, take on a friend in my life, I ask for three things. I ask for peace, love and respect. And, um, if I can't get all three of those from a person, like it's okay. Uh, they're just not a friend or a person that I will ever get close to or open up to. I think we've pretty much seen in this conversation that I have nothing but peace, love, and respect for you. Um, and I know you have that for Thank me. You. And that's, Thank and that's, that's what, that's what a brotherhood you. is. Yeah. It, it, and, it, and it's a special thing and you should not ever take it for granted. So um, yeah, I, I, the lack of respect is something that turns me off. <laughs> love it. What sound or noise do you love? <laughs> oh gosh uh you know what i really love the sound of uh the sound of a human voice emoting 
uh, whether it's through the spoken word or I'm a singer and you can just, again, I was bringing up Mandy Patinkin. You can just tell when like you're in it. And I feel like there's nothing better. And I mean, like I would just listen to Graham, like, you know, read the nutrition label of, a, you know, a cereal box, or I actually got him. I have a video of him where he read, I, I picked out a bourbon for him, Jefferson Ocean, but I did that because I know that Jefferson Ocean is not only a good bourbon, but it has the voyage journey on it, which is like, you know, it's got yeah. like a little thing about like where the bourbon came from and how it was, you know, da, da, da. And I literally said, I, yeah, right, right. <laughs> So when we, we, we went bourbon drinking, you know, over at the producer's house one night, we, um, you know, I said, no, Graham, you can't have a, a single sip of this bourbon until you read this. And then he got like, oh, you know, like I, I emoted, he emoted. And it was just like, so, um, you know, uh, the spoken word, the, the power awesome. of the human voice. Yeah. Okay. What it sound or noise do you hate? When you say that, it honestly just makes me think of Dumb and Dumber. You know what I mean? Do you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Ah! I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> what is your favorite curse word? It's so it's so versatile. I'm also a New Yorker, so I feel like that's like every other sentence is fuck. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a versatile curse word. Um, Graham turned me on to, uh, another one, but I don't feel comfortable saying it, but the way that he says it, I, I would right, put money, right. I, I would, I, I think you know what it is. I would put money on the fact that he says it if, uh, if you, if you interview him, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's not my favorite cause I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> I understand. understand. Especially in America. Um, right. Yes. Okay. Well, you do know, you do know what it is. Then. For, yeah. Um, hmm. Cattle rancher. After, um, oh, I'm not going to give anything away, but yeah, after, after what I, what we, yeah. what, what, what we saw, I, I, I have nothing but respect for what they do. Um, I'm, I'm a meat eater, um, but I could, I could never do what they do. Never. I couldn't. But I have so much respect that they do that, that they make that sacrifice for us. Yeah, because that's what that's where the hamburgers come from. You know what I mean? It's like, come on. But what they do is they, they raise our food. You know what I mean? They, uh, they're in it. They're in it. All right. Last one, man. I know that heaven exists. But if you, uh, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Hmm. I like that. Um, welcome. We've been expecting you. Let your next chapter begin. Love it. I love it. That wraps up electrifying episode remember to keep seeing embracing love for god people and your neighbors stay tuned for more uh i can't even read that word what is that word our next cool conversations <laughs> and don't miss out on the next episode of hot dog live podcast right now we're doing every other thursday thanks for joining us today until next time Keep shining bright and uh, all the social links. Matt, so much, man. It's been a pleasure. You, uh, I'm you. so excited to see your next adventures and to uh, possibly do another project together. But either way, man, you are a beautiful person. Keep doing what you're doing. I love your your spirit. I love you, man. I love you. Love to be on hot dog live ditto my friend appreciate it thank you you too however this thing ends i don't even know how to turn this thing oh off. we could do an outtake yeah i'll just i'll just wait until you end it you're the host right
Is it this button right. here? It's like, I don't want to remove the <laughs> button. That I think this, this is, is how okay, this, here it is. This is how All this right, episode it officially ends. It's this. It's <laughs> right. Hot dog live. Like this. Ouch. Okay. <laughs> Hot dog live. Hot dog style. Bye. <laughs>